Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Methhead. And recently I asked you guys to vote for your top choice and what you wanted to see next. And you guys voted for a life update and what MST year will look like in general. So starting off with summer, we're really just gonna do a quick overview and just gonna revisit some things quickly because a lot of you guys have been following me in my vlogs this summer and you probably know what I've been up to. So I don't wanna bore you or waste too much of your time. So it's gonna be a little bit more of like a rapid fire list to just review what I've been doing all this summer and pretty much what I'm going to be doing this last week and a half to two weeks of summer that I have. So we've been shadowing a lot. You guys have seen me shadow with ortho and pediatric surgery quite a bit. I have been a teacher's assistant for microbiome and biochemistry. You guys saw me do that with the JAMP program this summer, which is near and dear to my heart, and I really enjoyed that. We have a couple research projects going on. One is with the SRP, or the Summer Research Program here at McGovern, which is basically a program where we are matched with a PI and run our own research with obviously help from our PI. And mine has been over vascular trauma, not getting too deep into that. And I have another one that is in orthopedics. You guys have also been watching a few of my other videos. You'll notice that I do go to the Houston Food Bank about once a week. So that is super fun to go to because as a child, I used to receive some boxes from the Houston Food Bank. So to be able to try to give back to a program and a cause that gave to me is an awesome feeling. I also did a bit of studying, obviously. Making sure to do Anki every day, finishing Sketchy Micro and the farm for all the antimicrobials. And right now I'm also in the process of finishing the biochem section in Boards and Beyond. I've spoken on a few panels, done a few mentorship opportunities, which I'm also passionate about. And for relaxation and fun, honestly, I've been doing not much of anything. I did go to my friend's wedding, which was really fun. Went to Austin, hang out with some friends, and in between have been hanging out with friends with some good food and drinks and just playing video games, honestly. The next section is gonna be organized into school schedules, extracurriculars and jobs, testing like step one board exam, and the planning I may or may not be doing for that, and just in general lifestyle miscellaneous things that I am going to make sure or hopefully will be manifested during this MS2 year. So in that order, starting off with the school schedule. So if you guys can see here, this is our, I guess, overview curriculum calendar. We just finished MS1, super excited about that, still celebrating. And now we have MS2 to go through, which is the second half of preclinical years. And this is where we're at right now on vacation. So summer research. As you can see, we start with GI or gastrointestinal. GI is gonna be followed by NSB or nervous system and behavior. And then we have endocrine to wrap out the semester. Doctoring three is gonna be done throughout the whole year, which is why they call it a longitudinal clinical experience, which is basically, if you've seen my other videos, the non-textbook part of being a doctor, the more clinically relevant things. Sometimes you have learning things like public health policies and more of the business side of medicine. Christmas vacation, and then we have two more modules after that. Before step, we have repro and MSK and derm. Obviously, we also have the doctoring following through with that. They're still giving us the dedicated period that they normally would give students around the March to April time, and most people take step around April, early April, maybe May. I'll touch more on step in a little bit and kind of my thoughts about it so far and what I'm going to be trying to do to prep as I start to make more geared efforts towards the exam. But this is what MS2 year looks like. Beyond this point is not really MS2. Here is the start of MS3 where we start our clinical rotations and our clerkships. So we start that around May-ish. We get about a few weeks off from step depending on when you take it or not or if you use your whole dedicated time. That's a whole nother story. We gotta get through MS2 first but this is just a general gist of what MS2 year is gonna look like at least. Besides doctoring, we also will have problem-based learning or PBL obviously being on Monday and Wednesday every week. It's a required session where we kind of do a made up per se. My ring light keeps coming off, so I might, <laughs> why? Why? We're gonna try this one more time. My ring light keeps coming off and if it keeps doing that, I'm just gonna eventually turn it off and just open the windows. We're gonna try that one more time. But as I was saying, PBL is gonna be running like normal Monday and Wednesdays. We go in with a fake patient kind of case and discuss different types of possible differential diagnoses and possible courses of treatment. So that is a little bit of a fun experience for me. And it's kind of the last of the required things I have going on during the school schedule. Obviously we'll have patient presentations scattered amongst, but that is the general gist. For extracurriculars and jobs, I will be continuing my vascular trauma research and pretty much all the research I've been doing this summer into the school year. 
if you're gonna get a publication or research, it usually takes longer than the summer. So it would only make sense for me to continue working on it into the school year. I may possibly be adding another project, but we'll see. Right now there's a little bit of a scheduling conflict or we don't really know if things are gonna line up perfectly because not all the... I feel like I felt that coming. We're gonna... No, we're gonna do the blinds. We're gonna open the blinds. It's just these weird lines you guys can see now, but it's okay. So hopefully that research falls into place for me. Right now I'm gonna keep it under wraps until it does, but if it doesn't, it's okay. I have other opportunities and other things I can try to put more focus into. Another thing I'm super excited for is being an anatomy pedagogue. That will run every Tuesday and Wednesday. I will be in lab. And if you guys know anything about me, I love anatomy. So this is a cool opportunity and experience for me. Some other extracurriculars I'm gonna do, obviously I'm gonna continue volunteering at the Houston Food Bank whenever I have time to. And I'm gonna continue shadowing and trying to learn more about the fields that interest me and get to see more of what it actually is like out in the field. So for testing, obviously after each of the modules I showed you guys will have one big test, but that one really big one at the end of MS2 is the dreaded step one, which is now pass fail and has a lot of people kind of feeling indifferent or really confused about it. I, for one, at least am indifferent or feel confused about it just because it is a very new system and a lot of people don't know what's going to happen with what certain residencies are going to want to look for more in an applicant. So that could be a whole nother video, but what comes with that confusion is prepping for step because you have a limited amount of time, obviously, and people used to study so much for STEP, but now that it's pass fail, do you put that time in towards research or volunteering more, or do you study the same just to get a pass? I'm not saying that's really any of my opinions. I do have one, but what do you guys think? I just, at this very moment, am going to treat it as if it's not pass fail because I don't know what else to really do. So that's how that is looking right now. I don't have an actual written concrete plan on what I'm going to be doing every day when I'm studying and dedicated, but I do have some idea of how I want to start reviewing things as we start trickling in. As you can see, I'm already doing reviewing for step like for biochem, I'm making sure to get that out of the way right now and suspend all those Anki cards. During GI, I'm gonna start looking at immunology videos for boards and beyond and making sure to get that out of the way. And these are really just things that I've learned before, so it's okay for me to just watch one or two videos every once in a while to start getting those things I've seen out of the way for review and all the Anki out of the way. So the time dedicated comes around, I at least have been seeing things by the second or third pass. I'm also gonna do the same with cell biology and genetics and probably save things like biostatistics for dedicated because I don't think I have a long-term retention method to hold all that. Even though there are Anki cards for it, I would much rather do that within dedicated. But that is the plan right now. There's also the question, do you use UWorld for step one? Because it's expensive. UWorld is not a cheap item. And if it's pass fail, is it worth it? It is very likely most people will pass without UWorld. So my school pays for it for me. So I will probably be using it if the subscription only goes towards step one. Like I said, mostly treating this like it's not pass fail, but the added benefit is not having the dreaded stress and waking up every day feeling defeated or scared or nervous because you know it's pass fail, but you still want to do your best. So that is my outlook going forward. You want to do your best, like it isn't pass fail, but you have the added benefit and the stress release of knowing it is indeed pass fail. So that's about what I have planned for right now. As I figure out more things, I will let you guys know. Obviously, I'm gonna have to start planning about it more sooner than later. But right now we're in the summer between MS1 and MS2, and I can go a few more days without having a fully scheduled plan for step one. So, and finally for lifestyle and miscellaneous things, my financials look about the same as it did last year. Nothing really different besides step and a few other resources. So I'm gonna have to make sure if there is a resource or a fee my school doesn't cover, I at least pull out loans to cover that but nothing really out of the ordinary. If you wanna see more of a financial talk that I had going into MS1 year about tuition and fees and things like that, I will have a video somewhere up here on this side or that side. I also have an MS1 buddy now, which is super fun and I'm excited to get to know them more. MS1 buddies at my school are basically a system where they match an MS1 and an MS2 and the MS2 is able to provide any guidance, references, resources, or any just support in general for MS1s going throughout the whole four years. I still go to my 
now it's MS3 buddy for help and advice on how to approach step one things. But it's just now crazy that I have an MS1 buddy of my own, which is insane thinking that not too long ago, I was a very scared MS1 going in, relying a lot on the help of my MS2 buddy. So hopefully I can be a good buddy to mine. But yeah, very excited about that. Some of my goals this year is to stay more organized. I have more extracurricular things going on than I did last year. So I need to stay more on it by kind of making note of what's going on when in my planner and honestly drinking more water is another big goal of mine I know you guys probably have seen in my story that I posted this I am using this to basically motivate myself into drinking more and more water and it is a little bit daunting when you look at it but it's not as hard as it seems when you're kind of keeping track with the time so I've been working on that goal leading into the school year and if you guys have seen my other video you know that a good time to start working on the goals you want to have for a new school year is the few one or two weeks right before you start so those habits are already built by the time you're in school. I also enjoy cooking as a hobby as you guys might have also seen and it's cheaper and probably genuinely more healthier. So I'm gonna try to find more time to do it just because it's fun, cheap, and possibly we'll see healthier. But that's all the news I have for you guys. Everything I know, you guys now know and I'm super excited to start the MS2 year. Be on the lookout for some of the things I mentioned. I might, some things might change, we never know. These are things that are planned right now and they might not be the same tomorrow but as it is ms2 year is looking great no matter what and i will see all of you guys on the very next medhead thank you for joining me